Hey, hey, hey. All right, so with the Nets losing yet another game and dropping below 500 with a two and three record after losing to the Miami Heat last night, I figured now would be a good time to talk about what exactly is going on with the Brooklyn Nets. Because as of now, they're looking like a not so great team, which is weird. But one thing I do want to get out of the way first is that none of this is really Kevin Durant's fault per se. He's still an amazing basketball player. He's someone who I just still feel so confident in being able to watch him every night and just be amazed by what he's able to do on a basketball court. So far this season, he's averaging just under 30 points a game, which is his highest points per game total since his MVP season back in 2014, which is really crazy to think about because I mean, we all remember he tore his Achilles, what, like two years ago, and now he's already back in the NBA, absolutely dominating at a pace that he was once an MVP at which is just insane. So with that being said, it's very disappointing to see Kevin Durant having such an awesome start to the season and just it not really mattering that much since the rest of these Nets team is struggling mightily to just get any sort of production on the court. Because when you have a roster like the Nets with a ton of offensive firepower and not a whole lot of defense on it, you just cannot be at a place where you're 25th in the entire NBA in points per game and 29th in the league in offensive rating. I literally cannot comprehend how this is possible when you have Kevin Durant and James Harden on your roster and playing every night and I know the Cole Kyrie situation is its own thing and he's technically on the roster but he's not playing right now. But either way just having Durant and Harden and a bunch of other good offensively minded players there's just no way in hell that you should be in the bottom half, more than the bottom half, the bottom six in the league in both points per game and offensive rating. That just should never happen. But speaking of James Harden, let's take a moment and talk about him because he's also had a very interesting start to his season. Because the big headline so far has obviously been, you know, the new fouling rules and fouling techniques and whatever you want to call those. A lot, of the, a lot of people are trying to find connections between those new rules and why James Harden is playing so poorly to start the season, but it's nowhere near the whole story. Because yes, it is true, through five games, James Harden's averaging three free throw attempts per game, which would be a career low, which is absurd because you know, even back when he was a rookie and barely getting that much playing time and that many opportunities, he was still taking more free throws per game than he is so far this season. But even when you look at the other stats for James Harden so far, he's averaging a career low in field goal percentage and three point percentage as well. And that just goes to show you that it's not just the free throw thing, James Harden's just not making shots. Now I'll be honest, I probably have not watched as many Nets games as I should have this year, but in the games that I have watched, James Harden has simply just looked passive. He's not attacking the rim with the same ferocity that we've seen in years past. He's also trying to get way more assists. I feel like he's passing out of way more drives than he should be. Because even new foul rules aside, I don't know why James Harden is trying to avoid contact when he goes to the rim. And rather than try to get layups, get and ones, get fouled, he's simply just trying to throw lobs to Nick Claxton, Blake Griffin, whoever's on the court. And it's just not working that well. Now, with all that being said, James Harden, after last night's loss, did have a quote that stood out to me and I want to talk about. Because he actually mentioned how, since he had the hamstring injury in last year's playoffs, that injury obviously lingered into the offseason, which meant that he had to continue to rehab that injury, and because of that, he wasn't able to get as many reps in practice and runs in as he usually would in an offseason because James Harden has usually been a pretty healthy player. And I mention that because I feel like a lot of NBA fans don't realize how important a healthy offseason really is. Because for a lot of players, with the regular season just being so long and tiresome and you're playing every day, it's hard to focus on the things that are going to make you better as a player. That sort of stuff just kind of happens as you get a you know, better feel for the game, game starts slowing down for you, and you're able to perform better. But it's not until the offseason where guys are able to you know, get in their bags, work on their bags, add new moves, basically just you know, get better fundamentally as players, That's just, it's just so much easier to do that in the off season than it is during the you know, game after game after game during the regular season. So in that aspect, I do stand with James Harden and the fact that because he had to rehab so much, he wasn't able to basically be in great basketball shape to start the season. So that could also just be playing a factor into his weak offensive performances. Either way, I assume that James Harden will return to form at some point this year. How long will that take? 
I don't know. I don't know James Harden on a personal level, but I assume it will happen at some point. And then we've already talked about two of the big three, so we might as well talk about the other one real quick. And um, you know, the Kyrie Irving situation, I'm glad that we haven't heard as many day-to-day -day news as we did at the end of the offseason because boy was that a pain. But no matter how many jokes you want to make about the situation, you know, with Kyrie being anti-vax but not quite anti-vax and just I don't even want to get into it really. But in terms of basketball and what's happening on the basketball court for this Brooklyn Nets team, I think it's pretty clear that Kyrie Irving plays a tremendously important role to this roster and without him this roster just won't work that well because Kevin Durant is a great scorer James Harden great scorer both those guys are all time when it comes to their offensive basketball games but Kyrie Irving just adds it's such a good new dimension to this roster because he's able to get to the rim so easily and that doesn't just break down a defense for him to get buckets but it breaks down a defense and helps other teammates get buckets as well because Kyrie's gravity when he drives to the rim is absurd and it just gets so many other people wide open shots. And so when you take that out of the equation, you have Kevin Durant who, again, great scorer, but he's not that much of a rim pressure guy. And you have James Harden who is usually a good rim pressure guy, but has not been anywhere close to his usual self so far this season. That need for Kyrie Irving just seems to grow game by game. Now the issue with the Irving situation is that this isn't an injury, this is at least a normal injury. This is something where he could be back tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if it got reported that he got vaccinated, or he could re literally retire at this point. I also would not be surprised by that either. <laughs> and as a Celtics fan that had to deal with Kyrie for a few years, I fully understand Brooklyn Nets fans' pain right now as the situation is just so uncertain and up in the air. Anyways, let's just finish this video out by taking a look at the rest of the roster and just, you know, check in how the other guys are doing. Amidst all this negativity, one guy who's been having an absolutely awesome season to start the year for the Brooklyn Nets is new free agent addition Patty Mills. Now, I was super excited to see him on this team, whether Kyrie was there or not, just because Patty Mills is awesome. He's a great offensive spark plug, he's capable of dropping 20, even 30 points on any given night. And uh, he's, he's been rock solid steady to start this year for the Nets. Right now, Patty Mills is averaging career highs in both points per game and three point field goal percentage with 12 and a half points per game. And he's shooting over 51%, almost 52% from the field from three point land. And again, it just cannot be understated how awesome it is to have someone like Patty Mills just be able to come off the bench and just be a sure bucket any given night for the most part. Especially when you don't have Kyrie Irving to get you points from the guard position in the starting lineup, that just makes Patty Mills that much better. Joe Harris, on the other hand, is having his worst three-point shooting performance in seven years almost. His playoff woes have seemed to continue on into the season as he's currently sitting at around 37, 38% from the three-point land, which, you know, for, for an average player isn't terrible, but when you're Joe Harris and you're coming off a year where you led the league in three-point shooting percentage at 47, 48%, a 10 point a 10 percent drop off is just not ideal especially when the nets again have just been struggling so much offensively and then from there the rotation of bigs just continues to be bad i don't even know what else to say about them i guess so far it seems like lamarcus aldridge is kind of pulling away as he's been in some late game scenarios at least from what i've seen i know he's had a couple nights where he was getting some buckets for the Nets, but between him, Blake Griffin, Nick Claxton has been struggling a lot more than I think a lot of people thought he would to start the season, as he just has not been crazy effective on the defensive side of the ball, which is what he was, you know, that's the type of guy he's supposed to be. But even Paul Millsap has been relatively disappointing after signing on in the offseason to be a good bench big. And if it were up to me, I would be interested to see what James Johnson and even Bruce Brown are able to do. Especially Bruce Brown, considering how important he was to this Nets team last season, especially in the postseason, as sort of playing the small ball five roll on offense, it allows KD to play the five roll on defense. And it just overall, it worked really well with the rest of the lineups that they were using, again, come playoff time. And one final quick note that I'll throw in there is that, uh, you know, the offense is struggling, not playing so well. There's some open minutes at the guard spot. Why not give Cam Thomas a few runs here and there? You know, he's, a, he's a good shooter, great scorer. Maybe he can help out the offense a little bit. I know you don't want to put a whole lot of pressure on a rookie to come save your team, especially when you're the Brooklyn Nets and you're known for your high-powered offense, but hey, what could go wrong? 
But yeah, overall, I mean, the main takeaways, Nets are 2-3. and three. There's plenty of other good teams that are struggling to start the season. Uh, but the, the defense hasn't even been that terrible for the Nets. They're about middle of the pack right now, which is what you'd want, I guess, as a Brooklyn Nets fan. But this offense needs to figure something out and figure something out fast before this becomes too big of an issue. And if you've made it to this point in the video, then congratulations, you're a real one. Now, if you enjoyed this video, maybe think about hitting the subscribe button, should be somewhere in this general direction. Or if you're not sure yet, maybe check out another video, which should be in this general direction. Either way, thank you for watching.